Crucis. She has been the special project coordinator for the last Secretary of State. She was the project coordinator for Southwestern New Mexico. She served in that capacity over two years, and she has worked as a paralegal in that field uh, for over 25 years. So Maria uh, will be my expert witness. All right. Uh, I, and I do apologize for the amendment. We worked and worked and worked and tried to have a clean bill that you know it's always a work, work in uh, motion and we have to go back and find the amendment again. But on page two, line 17, after name, we have inserted and birthday. So it shows the name of the person and birthday to whom the document was issued. On page three, line two, the same after name, insert and birthday. On page six, line 25, after the semicolon, insert or on page seven, strike lines one through eight in their entirety. <coughs> then on page, oh, I'm sorry, I left out <laughs> page six, line 16. I thought I had gotten that in, but maybe I didn't. Uh, and we instead on, after the semicolon, oh no, that was, Pardon me. The letter, pardon me. <laughs> page seven, strike lines one through eight. Oh, I oh, see. It's up here. It's on page six, six, line 16. Before conform, we insert substantially. Pardon me. I didn't realize I lost it that far back. Um, and then, of course, uh, our number six is to be letter the succeeding subsection <laughs> accordingly. And uh, the seventh is on page seven. Line 10, strike or correctly. Strike line 11, strike line 12, up to the comma. So it reads, if the voter is unable to present identification in accordance with subsection A of this subsection, the challenge shall be handled in accordance with provisions of section 112-12-22. Uh, then on page Eight. Line eight. Pardon me. On page eight, line four. Before conform. Again, uh, insert substantially. And then again on can we realize because of some of the information we have received in the FIR and such that we needed to amend the bill. It started as a short amendment, only having the uh, birth date added, only having substantially added, and finally uh, it came about this last section five. And we thought this made it clearer because we had had questions about whether a person would be able to vote provisionally if they were not allowed, and of course to have laws, they have to be able to uh, vote provisionally. And this was uh, because we didn't think it was clear enough that you couldn't just show your photo ID and not and have the judges say no, you had to have some method of being able to uh, vote. Uh, Representative uh, Hamilton and members that are here, um, a situation like this, usually, we will do a rollover so that she will have to do a substitute bill. 
because this is very, very lengthy. It's a very lengthy amendment. I will go ahead and allow it to go through uh, and see uh, where we get, because otherwise uh, if we have an amendment that has two pages and all this wording and all this striking. It is very difficult for the members to follow. And at this time, I'll go ahead and allow it. Um, and uh, we do have a motion for the amendment. Do uh, uh, you pass to have a second? A second? Second. No, sure. Yes, for, for, for discussion. Yeah, I, uh, I understand there's a motion for you to pass on the amendment, although uh, there's a lot of people here, and these are substantial amendments. And I was wondering if the uh, folks that are here had an opportunity to receive a copy of the amendments. No, Madam Chair, they have not. And if we, can we do that somehow? I think in all fairness, they should look at uh, the amendments. And, and Madam Chair, if I may interrupt, and Representative, they do not have a copy of the bill. I do not believe. Well, Madam Chair, then, um, and I understand we have a few pass, but these are substantial amendments that I can't even get, my, uh, get around it. I'd have to ask questions line by line on the amendments in all fairness before we do a due pass. And I don't mind doing that. Maybe a good time to do that. But also, if we don't get a substitute bill, another op option is to get a mock-up. So maybe we could ask, because uh, I think for the folks in the audience, if we could get a mock-up with the amendment, you know, so that we have a bill with the amendments in it, it'll be easier for us to read uh, all together for everybody to take a look at it. Could we do that, Madam Chair? Yes, we can. I don't, I don't know if we have to necessarily recess. I would like, if so many people came here, probably from all over, I think it would be a good idea for them so to have an opportunity to speak on the bill. And, and maybe we can go to go over the bill, the amendment. Uh, before we vote on the amendment, and I don't know if any of the people from the audience who want us to are going to speak to the bill without amendments or with the amendments. It, I think it, with all fairness to the folks that came here today, they should have an opportunity to speak today if they can. Uh, and then, if, if you don't mind, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask questions on the amendment, but I would defer to the, the public process first. So we probably talk about the bill and have folks speak, and then come back to the amendment, because it's technical. And I, you know, no, but he There may be some stuff in here that's very good, and other stuff we have to look at in light of uh, the election code. Uh, first of all, are there any members uh, on any items that would like to speak on Copy of the amendment. Copy of the amendment. Copies. Uh, uh, just like the, we are going to allow just a testimony of just a few of you. Uh, and if we can really have people craft out some amendments, but uh, <coughs> trying to save trees. Uh, first of all, I will go ahead and field. see if there is anybody that wishes to speak on the amendment. And let me tell you uh, the process. You get up and you identify yourself. And you say uh, your name and uh, who you are representing, please. And this is on the amendment only, not on the bill. Only on the amendment. We Trust haven't you seen the amendment. Yeah. Okay. Can, we, can we just do, can we do the bill and then come back to the amendment? I think a lot of people okay. here are. Okay. Maybe All right, we'll go ahead and go on the bill, and I think there's a way to go ahead. Me? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm asking for those of you who are in favor of the bill first. Okay, and then we will take anybody that is opposed to the bill afterwards. Okay, Madam Chair, uh, my name is Nancy Boisel, and I'm from Albuquerque, and I strongly support this uh, bill. And let me give you a couple reasons why. I've served as a clerk and are a judge for many years in Albuquerque, working for the Bernalillo County Clerk in many elections. And in those capacities, I have observed a couple <coughs> cases that I want to tell you about of attempted fraud that were caught. I want to tell you about a case of actual fraud. Let me be very brief. Okay, uh, first case of attempted fraud. A young lady came up to the, to the registration table uh, to vote. She gave a name. The poll worker who was in working the table uh, looked up and very quickly, this person is very good on math. The age, the last two digits on the birth year that were on the register, 
versus the young lady standing in front of the co-worker says, I'm sorry, you can't possibly be this person. The young lady admitted she was there to vote for her grandmother. Mm. I was there. A second case, uh, an elderly lady came into the uh, school. We had two precincts. This lady came in and she said she was confused as to which precinct she should be voting in. So the uh, presiding judge said to the lady, do you have your voter card that would give you your correct precinct? She reached in and I was there. She pulled out five voter cards, different names. Presiding judge says, I'm sorry, you know, how do, how do I know who you are? That's okay, that was two cases of attempted fraud that I have observed. Let me tell you about the actual fraud I know of. An acquaintance of mine went to the polls early one morning and someone had already signed her name. And so she says, I'm sorry, that's not my signature. I was not here. So she filled out a provisional ballot. That's the process. So after the election, the normal process, she found out her provisional ballot was rejected. Her vote was stolen. I don't want my vote stolen. As we all know, IDs are required practically every day in your life. Let me tell you, when I went to my senior citizen center to join my senior citizen center in Albuquerque, I showed them my photo uh, driver's license. They took me to another room took my photo and made me a photo ID to join my senior citizen center. So, this is a citizen's issue. It's not a partisan issue. And I'll give you one more example how I feel, why I feel that way. 2003, I participated in a petition drive in Albuquerque for the city of Albuquerque elections for photo ID. I went out in my neighborhood, my previous neighborhood. It was heavily Democrat, large population of Hispanic. I did not care. I went door to door to door to door. I got easily 500 signatures supporting this uh, petition. So I do not believe this is a, a partisan issue. And I, I feel that to vote it's a, it's a citizen's responsibility. We should not burden a poll worker with trying to detect voter fraud because in many cases, I gave you a couple, it's impossible. Uh, just one more quick comment. I feel the current voter ID requirements uh, issued by the Berlio County Clerk's Office, and I'm assuming these are the same issue or instructions that are provided throughout the state. The part that is in heartburn is a person can self-identify. They can walk up to the poll, to the registration table, give a name and a address, and that poll worker has absolutely no way of knowing, mm -hmm. is that person really that person? Mm -hmm. Okay, my, my closing comments, we can never have good, honest government until you have good, honest connections. Thank you. Madam Chair, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt or if it's appropriate. Would it be easier if I explained the simple changes to the bill and didn't go into the difficult ones, such as adding birth date after name uh, as a requirement? Would that be of any help to anyone? If, uh, if you wish to do that, you may go ahead. Uh, well, one thing in the bill, we had said uh, that a document must show when you're voting uh, photo ID the name of the person to whom the document was issued. Well, we added to that the name and the birthday because uh, I know that I'm Diane Hamilton's. I've not been fortunate enough to meet one, but I know they have some. Uh, also, uh, there, that is, is, occurs twice. And then we use the word conform. 
and that is on page six. And we say that if a challenge is, is interposed because of the required voter identification, a voter, present, a voter presents does not conform to the requirements. We say substantially conform, whether that makes it any clearer or not. We spent about four days arguing over conform or substantially conform. But the idea behind it was, and I know we're talking about, about the amendment, but I am registered as Diane Hamilton. My first name is Francis. I've never used the name. I signed for years my name as F. Diane Hamilton, which has a different connotation today than it did 50 years ago. And so I got my driver's and I am now F. D. Hamilton on my driver's license. I am uh, F. Diane on my military ID card, and I am Francis Diane Hamilton on my passport. So none of my names conform, uh, but substantially, I would think, they conform, and I've got all these different types. Now, if they don't, I'd be happy to go in and change my registration. But we thought that a judge would be able to look at that, compare the birthday, and say, and then look at the picture and see if it looks like me, and some of them are so horrible. Yeah. Okay, no, no. <laughs> but they would uh, be able to say, this truly is the Hamilton. And that was what those changes were. I thought that might make it a little simpler for the people who don't have a copy of the bill. And then the rest, of course, is uh, more uh, trying to make it easier for our county clerks when they have somebody come in that they do suspect to realize that in the bill it should be stated that these people still get to vote provisionally, that you cannot uh, according to the hat laws, allow anyone not to vote provisionally. And, and so if that cleared it up for anyone in the audience, thank you, Madam Chair, for your indulgence. Uh, thank you. Uh, we do have uh, 30 copies now of the amendment, and uh, they will pass them out. Uh, if, oh, there's about 30 people out there in the audience. Just go ahead and hold up your hands. And it, we'll continue the testimony. Go ahead, sir. Come forward and identify yourself. Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Sage Mike Dandy. I am a resident of Santa Fe County. And uh, I, I stand in support of this bill. I, I, I supported it when, when uh, Secretary It's okay, Spain I'll share with her. And she introduced it. And I spent some time <laughs> to gain her audience simply so that I could make this statement to her, which I want to repeat to you. Any claim to legitimacy in a democratic society is vested in the integrity of the voting system. The very first aspect of integrity is identification. The person needs to identify themselves. We've <coughs> already heard the secretary, I mean, the, the, the uh, uh, county clerk, uh, uh, talk about how there is fraud. And uh, I really think that we need to have identification. I however don't like driver's license, who shows your address and a lot of other things. I simply would like to say the precinct that I'm in and, and as far as the age requirements for someone who is uh, under 21, I would like to see if you have it, uh, 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 a different color uh, uh, code until they get to be 21. So that this voter identification should be identification. Instead of uh, uh, Albuquerque having a driver's license, I'm an advocate for bicyclists and pedestrians, and I haven't owned a car in 33 years. I rode a bicycle here from Nashville, Tennessee in 1982. Does that mean when I go into, if I move to Bernalillo County, I'm not going to be able to vote because I don't have a, a, a driver's license? Thank you. Thank you. We have three more people. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Members of the board, my name is Frances Gonzalez, and I'm from Grant County. I'm from Representative Districts County. I'm Representative Hamilton County, I'm sorry. And um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is um, the bill is very important. Just, uh, different people have gone up and said uh, the first lady who came up we have actually witnessed 
of the fraud that people have brought to our attention and have gone to vote. He's not going to let you wait in line. So that's one issue. You won't let you wait in line. Another issue that we've also run into Grand County is the purging. Um, since the purging deadline was passed, it, it, it passed and it wasn't able to be implemented for this year, 2011. That's another concern because now the, the, the registers where everyone is that needed to be purged isn't going to be purged. So that's another concern that the voter bill needs to pass because then we're gonna have people who have been passed away or have moved and their that same registration is gonna stay there. And then you have people with multiple names, as Representative Hamilton has mentioned. I mean, there's like 16 Francis Gonzalez's. They don't know which one I am. They just take my word when I go in and I sign to vote. They don't know which one I am. So that's another concern. The other thing that I wanted to bring up too is also being Native American myself and Hispanic. And I'm also with the Inner Tribal Council and our chain unit over in the, our Silver City area. One of the things that's important to me is that um, we also have our identification too as well as a driver's license. So I know that this issue has also come up with just tribal people. Um, people have said that it will affect us as Native Americans. No, it won't. Um, it's very, it's very important though for us too because not only do we only have our, we have our elections on our, on our different communities, but we also vote in state and federal elections as well. And we like to make sure that when we go to vote too, that we are also recognized and that we have, we have our identification so that we don't get mixed up as well. And this, this bill does not in any way go and take any kind of constitutional right or um, infringe on anyone's um, voting rights. As a matter of fact, this actually goes to ensure that when I, Francis Gonzalez, go to vote for any of you, that we're going to make sure that it is the right individual and the right person. The bill is definitely a nonpartisan. It is an issue that us as constituents and people want, and we want this to be passed because it's something that's needed to prevent fraud. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Okay. And please speak up. Uh, I got to note that the people in the back are not here, so uh, those of you that are speaking, you have to speak up so they can hear you also. Okay. Madam Chair, my name is Robert Mitchell, member of the committees. I'm here as the head of the Tavis County Tea Party Group. Also, the Roswell Second Amendment Task Force. And my partner and I do a show that goes nationwide also on the internet radio. So I've had the opportunity to deal with many people in various aspects of my personal life with the different groups. And one thing I found universally is that this transcends every racial barrier that we've got because to me and the people that I've come up here to represent, the right to vote is the most sacred right a citizen this country has. We have the chance to go out during the elections to state who we want sitting here in front of us such as this group. We're standing here in the citizen's house in the middle of New Mexico because this is our house. The people that are sitting here in front of me are put here by the citizens with their votes. Yes. I've been a poll watcher in our votes. I moved into New Mexico in 1997. I've worked in the committees, I've worked in different areas. I collected over 500 signatures, just my group ourselves, which we turned over to Victor Contreras with the Hispano Unitas group. And this is just out of our small area around Roswell. And these were multinationality people. It wasn't just white people, it wasn't just the Hispanics, it wasn't the Indians. Everybody that came up to our table stated that we need this to protect our rights. They go to rent a, a video movie. You have to produce an ID. Mm -hmm. You go to cash a check. You go to your bank where they know you. I mm -hmm. still have to produce an ID. Mm -hmm. That doesn't affect my rights. It wouldn't affect your rights or anybody else's right. If it's important mm -hmm. enough that I present an ID to rent a movie, it should be important enough to present an ID to vote. And with the gentleman's comments about our driver's license, we're one of three states in New Mexico, and I know that is not in this bill, but it's very important. We have a specific ID <coughs> that is valid for a citizen to vote, because that is a citizen's right, where our driver's license could be issued to anybody that presents three utilities. So we need a specific ID 
to protect our rights to vote, as well as your rights to sit there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And then I'll go to the back. My name is Shara Kearney, and I'm with the East Mountain Tea Party. And I want to say, first of all, thank you to both sides of the aisle. We appreciate so much what you're doing. And I wanted to say I'm here today in support of this bill. I think it's a sensible bill. And I think that the people, we the people, we are the represent, out of representative. You represent the people of the state. You don't represent people of other states. You don't represent people who are not from New Mexico. And this bill is a sensible bill to protect the rights of the people of New Mexico to make sure that their vote is counted and to protect the sanctity of the voting booths. So I wanted to ask you also to consider this bill, to support the bill, to help restore voters' confidence. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go ahead and go to the back for the user. Uh, Madam Chairman and members, uh, I'm Can Jim Crawford. Brief, please. Okay. I'm uh, Jim Crawford from Las Lunas. I'm an uh, interested citizen and taxpayer. And, uh, you know, I have to show my, my picture ID to get my own money out of my own bank. Mm -hmm. And now, just as of uh, this week, uh, if I wanted to get a court record, I'd have to show a picture ID mm -hmm. to get court records involving uh, my own uh, uh, record. And, uh, you know, if I go into Staples and buy something, I have to show a picture ID to complete my purchase there. So why shouldn't I have to show a picture ID to vote? You know, voting is our most important and sacred ritual in this country. And so why shouldn't we have to prove we're a qualified voter and the person who we say we are. I act as a, a precinct presiding judge, and you'd be surprised, but most of the people that come through the door have an ID out already. So uh, I don't think this would be an imposition on people at all. They, many people expect to be able to show an ID. And a picture ID would cut down on the vast number of mix-ups of misspelled, mispronounced, and identical names, because we do see a number of those when we when we are checking people in at the polls. You know, the, the fur uh, points out a number of problems with the bill, and I think the amendment has addressed some of them. But I I do think uh, if if all those can get addressed, this would be a very good bill, and I certainly support passage. Thank you very much. Okay, um, okay. way way in the back. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Carla Sontag, and I am with Rebound New Mexico and the New Mexico Business Coalition. <coughs> this is a very large group of concerned citizens. We consider this one of the most important bills before the legislature right now. Many of our members feel disenfranchised right now because their vote can be stolen, there can be fraud. We have documented cases of that going on. For the uh, opinions already expressed and those that I'm sharing with you now, I encourage you to please strongly support this bill and help it move forward through the House today. Thank you. Thank you. There's still one up, okay? Good lady in the red and black. Madam Chairman, my name is Elaine Miller. I'm President of the Federation of Republican Women. I speak in support of this bill. New Mexico voter voting is fraught with problems. If we would have voter photo voter ID, I believe we would eliminate the problem of voter fraud. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Members of the committee. I come here to support this bill and all of us want to be calm and rational in our speech. But this is a, a bill that, that brings up an almost visceral reaction to people. Because what the people are asking you to do is to provide assurance that that most important of all of our institutions, the vote, 
remains with a matter of integrity that gives the people confidence. That's what's at stake here is the people's confidence and the people's confidence in you and the very process that ensures the liberty of the people of our state. Forever our, our government is racked with scandal. We will live with scandal all of our lives. And we will tolerate scandal. But when it comes to the point where we begin to feel that our vote does not count, or that the process that is supposed to ensure us the Republican form of government that our forefathers promised us becomes compromised, then that's what we're going to see in America that none of us really want to see. That's the burden that's on your shoulders as our representatives now is to provide that assurance through this legislation, which is a simple bill. You've already heard, I mean, the almost incredulous talk you're hearing from your constituents that we're even having a discussion about so basic and simple an issue as making sure that our vote remains the most highly credible mechanism we use to establish self-government in this country. This isn't something that, that we're going to, we need to be doing every legislature as the two parties play their silly little political games and play this fight. The very stake of our democracy is what you're dealing with here. And it's time for you guys to stop the partisan stuff. All of you know the problems we face in our voters, in our voter role, and the fact that we have literally millions of people in this country who we don't know who they are. We know that our state very foolishly allowed them to get driver's license, which then very foolishly allowed them to register to vote. You have the ability to start the process here in this committee to change that and to restore some confidence in our government and to restore some confidence in this process that we all are beginning to fear is crumbling around our ears. All right, ma'am, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry, my name is Bob Wright and I'm from down in Lee County. Okay. Yes. Madam Chair, my name is Beverly Dow. I just recently moved to Albuquerque. Uh, this issue came to my mind recently because I wanted to go get a library card for the city of Albuquerque. I had to show a photo ID to get a library card. That really surprised me. I didn't mind showing it, but there it was. For the last four years, not this year, but for the four previous years, I have worked for you as an analyst for the House of Representatives. In my work here, one of the people, one of my fellow employees for the House told me, he's a man from northern New Mexico, told me that he had, he told me, thought it was funny, that he has dead relatives who vote in every election. He thought that was just something to be amused about. I was appalled, Madam Chair. And so for the, that reason, I, we sort of joke around the state of New Mexico that, oh, dead people vote. Well, here was somebody who told me that his very relatives, he knew who they were. He could have told me their names. He didn't. We need some assurance that live, living people, living, breathing people are the ones who are actually casting their votes so that we do maintain the sanctity of that ballot box, that everybody knows that this is not a door to fraud. We have a great concern in our society for identity fraud, identity theft. This is just one more part of that concern. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, I'll allow one more. Oh, oh, oh. Is it against it? Okay. Yeah, uh, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, forgive me, my voice is not the way it should be today. Um, first of all, let me just say thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the committee, for the time that you are taking today and will take this session to listen to the concerns and the issues on this very important issue that we're discussing this morning. I have to tell you, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit differently than some of those that are here today, because as you all know, I have spent the last at least 10 months, 11 months of last year, traveling the state and listening to, to our constituents, as many of you do in your districts. I want to tell you that, I, in my opinion, the way I view the issue of voter ID, and we all had this discussion a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't really on a voter ID bill, but we shared some concerns, Representative Martinez and Representative Bordella, 
and we talked about those issues that are of concern regarding this issue, and I share those very same concerns. But as your Secretary of State, I'm here to talk to you about the issue of voter ID because as I traveled the state, I am here to tell you that I heard from people across the state that the number one issue, of course, they're concerned about you dealing with this session is the budget. But apart from the budget, the next issue everywhere was voter ID. I listened and I listened, and it truly did cross party lines, cross racial ethnicity. People around the state said, we need voter ID. As I discussed and had discussions with many of them, they talk, we talked about the issues that we deal with in committee all the time, issues of procedural issues that we need to deal with. But I want to tell you that I believe voter ID is necessary because of the integrity of the election process. I'm not here to talk about voter fraud or those issues. That's a separate issue in my mind that the Secretary of State, I am charged with by the citizens of the state of New Mexico to deal with. And I, as your next Secretary, your Secretary of State now, will include, have included, the voter fraud issue in the realm of what we're doing in the Secretary of State's office. But voter ID, to me, means in, not just in store and stealing, but assuring voters in this state that we have integrity in the election process and restoring and instilling confidence in the voter when they go to vote. So voter ID to me is about integrity in elections. So let me just share a couple of things with you. Um, first of all, we've dealt with the issue of uh, um, the purge process in the state. Someone mentioned this, and I want to just share this with you because I have had discussions with the county clerks, whom I believe and have said this throughout the year, I truly believe these are the experts in the field. These people work tremendously hard and do a great job conducting elections in the state. I've visited with them, I've listened to their concerns, I know they have concerns, but let me just share this little bit with you. You as legislators in here, elected by your constituents, are here to set policy. You've done that for years. We, in the Secretary of State's office, we as the county clerks, are required and obligated to implement the procedures once you set policy. We have seen these wonderful county clerks when the, the legislature passed a new way of voting, a paper ballot system, Many county clerks were not in favor of it. I was leery of it. I'm going to tell you, I voted no. But these men and women who conduct elections in our state, they have done a tremendous job of taking the policy that you create and implementing it and working through the procedural obstacles that we face. So I'm here to say to you that as your Secretary of State, if you choose to do what I believe the voters in your district the voters that I represent in the state of New Mexico truly want to pass this legislative session as their second priority, if you choose to do that, then we have a wonderful, wonderful group of people in all 33 counties. We at the Secretary of State's office stand ready to assist not only you, but them in implementing the procedure that is needed to assure the citizens of the state of New Mexico that their vote will count and count only once and that the person who appears at their polling place on election day is the person they say they are. Let me just share one more thing, and I have not had a chance to share this with the, our county clerks yet, and, and of course we will be visiting, but as, I, as I've talked to people who are saying, we don't think we need voter ID, what is this trying to correct? What is sure we're trying to correct here? Well, let me just share something with you that happened last week. I got a visit from the Department of Justice. They flew in from Washington to talk about the issue that of a violation of the federal law, the National Voter Registration Act, and you all are familiar with the NICOA, the National Change of Address Program, whereby the U.S. Postal Service and the voter registration system and the Secretary of State are combined. The previous Secretary of State failed to perform a procedure in 2007 called the National Change of Address Confirmation Mailing. In my mind, that is a step toward the purge which should have been conducted this year in March, which these people here have the authority on the, uh, the statutory requirement to appoint a board of registration or purge board as we know. I had to issue a press release two days ago saying there is no one to purge. The reason there is no one to purge in 2011 is because in 2007, that national change of address confirmation mailing did not occur. 
that process in the federal law was just not done, which means that we can no, not now, this year, conduct a purge to remove thousands of registered voters. What that means in all 33 counties is that we have an inflate, inflated, or some people say bloated, that is a good word, bloated voter files in all 33 counties. The fact that we have, and, and the number I'm looking at, and just to estimate, we don't even know what that number is. In 2009, the number of voters that were purged was a little more than 53,000. Currently, in the Secretary of State's office, in the system that we have now, we're looking at bringing, when we look at those people who are placed in active status, 79,000. So the fact that we have inflated voter rolls does provide a neutral and non-discriminatory, if you think about this, reason for supporting voter ID. We are going into the 2012 presidential election, of which, I'm going to tell you all in here, of which I'm really nervous about because it's a huge responsibility. But we will literally have, in all 33 counties, bloated voter rolls. We need to have voter ID implemented before going into 2012 elections in order to assure that every person who appears at that polling place is the person they say they are. Let me just tell you, as I, as I worked this last 10, 12 months on this issue, and polling was done throughout the, throughout the state, in every single poll that was done, regardless of party affiliation, racial ethnicity, the polls showed at least 80%. Nobody went let lower than 80%. And I just want to share with you the one that I found the most interesting. The one poll that was given to me was a poll that was conducted in the South Valley of Albuquerque, where we have racial diversity, party affiliations across all party lines. That poll was at least 80%. I traveled the state. I have people who said I'm declined the state. I'm Democrat. I'm Republican. We need voter ID in New Mexico. So I'm here standing before you today, not specifically on this amendment or specifically to work out the details of this bill. I do realize we have a lot of work here. But I'm here to suggest to you that you as policymakers, if you want your voting constituency to say, he believes that my vote, he understands that my vote wants to count, she does. So they are implementing policy. We have a Secretary of State and county clerks who can work together. I am dedicated to working with these county clerks who are the intricate part of making this work, to work with them on the procedures of how this can be done and done well in New Mexico. It's been done in a number of states. We're talking to those other states on best practices. This issue is critical to the people of the state of New Mexico. So I'm here today just to offer you our support. We stand ready to, to assist this committee in whatever way we can and to help you if, that, if you choose to do what the voters have asked us all to do. And I honestly believe that's why I'm standing here before you today because that was the number one issue in my campaign.